Click the link in the description to go to aoa.com, the best place to buy Skull and Bones Silver Cheap. Use code DTG for 3% off at checkout. Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Skull and Bones and we're going to be going through all 12 of the major furniture units in this game. So uh, if you're familiar with the game at all, you realize a big part of ship customization is the furniture options that you can use on them. And uh, there's basically three different categories, but really two if you look at it. Uh, one is just your regular furniture and the other one is major furniture. You can only have one one piece of major furniture equipped per ship and they kind of have the biggest gameplay impact now it's just because percentages are higher because many of these things you can find regular furniture that does the same type of thing it just doesn't do it quite to the same extent but with that being said I'm gonna go through all 12 of them and rate them from worst to best based on how applicable I find they are some of them are very good in one really specific use but then totally useless for everything else and so that will make it rank lower for me but uh, also just overall usefulness because if it is is super great maybe it's part of the best meta build in the game so let's just start it off at number 12 which is the worst one and move on up okay so you can see that if you want to craft any of these now mind you uh the way that i have found several of them because i actually have uh have or have at one point had all of these i cannot currently craft the last four because you have to buy these blueprints at the uh helm and i just haven't yet um but that being said you'll also get a lot of these as you know quest rewards or things that you'll find in treasure chests or from defeating elite enemies you know so you can get them all over the place. But if you want to craft them, once you have the schematic, you come to your carpenter in either uh, Telek Panjara or St. Anne. So I'm at the one in St. Anne. And if you look, you can see there are 12. So uh, just rating them in order from 12 to 1, I'm, I'm not going to take a long time on each one. Just kind of want to go through my thoughts on them. Uh, starting off at number 12, we have the Signal Gong. This is one of the first ones I got in the game. And I used it for a bit at first, but I realized after a while that it just doesn't have a lot of applicable use. It says, hear that, scallywags? That ain't no fucking dinner bell and it says increases damage by 15 percent after a crew attack for 30 seconds so this one isn't useless that's why i have used it and sometimes i still do use it but a it's only really useful if you're engaging in crew attacks which a lot of people based on different builds and combat styles in the game do not and it really only increases damage by a marginal percentage for 30 seconds so it's not all that long that might be two volleys from your guns so yes it has a use so it's not totally useless but you know it just it doesn't do much or for very long, so I just, I personally find myself using it less than pretty much every other one on here. So that's the signal gong, which I put at number 12. And number 11, we have the Gunner's Quadrant, and I find this one hilarious because it's one of the ones that you have to buy at the helm, and it's almost entirely useless. So this one says, Captain, are we counting fleas on their coats? Can we can shoot yet? I should probably avoid swearing too much in this video or I'll get, uh, you know, whatever, totally demonetized or something. Uh, it says, decreases reload time by 50% for the same weapon used to destroy a weak point from at least three 320 meters range. This applies only to the first shot. So this one is another one that, if you listen to that, it's so useless. So, decreases reload time by 50% for the same weapon used to destroy a weak point from at least 320 meters range. So if you take a really long shot, or a decently long shot from 320 meters, and destroy a weak point with it, then that weapon that you used will reload, it will decrease the reload time by 50%. That's just not super useful. If, if you look at it critically speaking, how often is that going to make a big gameplay difference? Yes, if I'm using, when I'm using a ballista to snipe weak points, yeah, sure, maybe that makes a difference, but not really with a ballista because that reloads uh, like automatically. As soon as you fire one shot, you can reload it again and shoot again. Uh, it doesn't take much time. I guess this would be most useful on long guns, but I can't imagine it would ever make a huge gameplay difference for me. So, and like I said, it's ironic because you actually have to spend pieces of eight to get this uh, schematic. So, so the Gunner's Quadrant is just not a good piece of major furniture. I, I can't think of any situation where it would be very useful at all. And at number 10, we have the Scoping Station, which says, Keep uh, your eye on that enemy ship, lad. Don't let me catch you sneaking winks at them mermaids. It says, Hitting a target more than 320 meters away applies the marked status. Targets with the marked status take 100% more damage to weak points. So this one's another one that I have used and sometimes still use it if I'm going for some sort of a sniping or instigating build. Uh, basically, as long as you're, if you're firing at an enemy from far enough away and you have this equipped, you know, as long as you're more than 320 meters away, it gives them that marked status. And then if you're going to keep sniping at their weak points, they will take a lot more damage once you've gotten that marked status on them. So it's not useless, but again, it's only applicable or useful in any way 
if you start your combat from really far away and uh, then are specifically targeting weak points. So, like I said, not totally useless. This one's not like the last two. It's definitely more useful and sometimes I use it, but still, in most situations, that's not going to be something I care all that much about. Coming in at number nine, we have the first aid station. It says, well, wouldn't need to patch you up if you'd shot the bastards first now, would I? Increases repair amount of repair weapons by 30% for ships with less than 33 of hull health. Now, this one is not broadly applicable. It's only useful at all if you're running a healing ship. That being said, if you're running a healing ship, it is super useful. This one is one that uh, in the couple times that I've gone out in the role of a healer, this has come in extremely handy because most often I don't start noticing, you know, or it's, it doesn't become a huge emergency to heal someone until they're really low, and then this just makes it more effective. So if you're running a healing support ship, then the first aid station is the obvious choice for your major furniture. So like I said, not broadly applicable. This one's only useful in a very specific situation, but in that situation, there's nothing better. So that's why I ranked it higher than the other ones, and that's why the first aid station takes the number nine spot. And number eight, we have the megaphone. It says, with each blast of the horn, our cannons barked louder. Consecutive hits decrease reload time by 0.5% up to a maximum of 15%. This effect res resets after 10 seconds. So this one's good. It uh, decreases your reload time, and you can actually get a pretty sweet boost going on with this. It's only good, though, if because it's consecutive hits for the same weapon. And so this one's only really all that useful if you're using something on a high level ship like a uh like the sandbook or the brig and you're using culver and cannons or something on the side where you're doing a lot of shots with the same weapons and so it can actually make you go pretty dang quick this would be a lot more useful if it didn't reset after 10 seconds if this just kept stacking as long as you kept hitting uh up to 15 or up to 20 percent or something like that then i'd rank it much higher but the reason i ranked it as low as i did despite the fact that it is pretty useful under the right circumstances like i said if you're using culver and cannons or something uh is that it resets after 10 seconds so unless all you ever do is roll broadsides and you're very accurate with it i don't think this one makes all that big of a gameplay uh effect so that's why the megaphone takes the number eight spot number seven we have the munitions mixer it says careful with that mix you bastards i'm not having my other brow seared off increases the duration of flooded and ablaze effects applied to enemy ships by 100 percent but reduces damage dealt from these effects by 30 percent so this one has a carrot and a stick so you obviously get that huge increase to the duration but you do get a de uh, decrease to the damage dealt, but... I oftentimes find that I'm when I'm running a flooded uh, weapon or I'm running in a blaze build, I'm not going specifically for the damage dealt by those effects. I'm going for the damage I can deal to the ships when they're affected by those effects. So I would rather have the duration be longer than the damage be higher. And so this one, again, it would rank higher if it was more broadly applicable. I do find that I like using flooded uh, weapons that deal flooding damage, especially on my, uh, my chase cannons, the ones on the back of my ship, to make sure that if I'm being chased, I can slow down the person chasing me. It's just a very useful thing to have, especially if you're doing PvP. Um, so this is good for that situation because we make that flooded effect longer and then you just get away. Uh, so it's good for running away, basically. And for the ablaze effects, if you're running a blaze build on like the sandbook or the uh, the barge or something like that, this is very useful for that because keeping that ablaze effect active for as long as possible is what you want to do with an ablaze build. Your weapons deal the damage, but that ablaze effect makes them deal so much more when you're running any of those perks. So like I said, munitions mixture, very useful if you're going going for flooded or ablaze effects. If you're not using any weapons that do either of those things, well then obviously this one's totally useless and you shouldn't use it at all. Number six, we have the rope locker. I believe this is the very first major furniture I ever got and I still use it quite a bit, especially on my brig. So it says, oi lad, use a spoon to wipe your ass. That's the trim rope, not an anchor line. Increases acceleration by 300% when trim is activated at full stamina. 5% of stamina is instantly consumed to trigger this effect. So the reason I like this one on the brigantine is that it's great for ramming. Uh, it's it's also good for quick, you know, you know, quickly avoiding any sort of incoming attack or something like that. So it's very broadly useful. Uh, but the reason I like using it is those surprise ram attacks where you wait until they can't possibly adjust to get out of your vector. And then you quick trim and you accelerate so much faster when you're using the rope locker. So it's it's just great for that. So like I said, it makes you a lot more maneuverable. Uh, the only downside is that it, it does eat up 5% of your total stamina right when you activate it. So uh, that's not great, but I think it's 
more than worth it to have that ridiculous acceleration boost. So the rope locker, like I said, is useful in a lot of different situations. I find it most useful on the brake, but it's it's great for everything. So that one I quite like. We're getting into the category of ones that I find just broadly useful all the time. So that's the rope locker at number six. At number five, we have the scrapper station, which says a pickaxe, butter knife, or your damned left shoe. Patch the hull, me hearties. Restores 8,000 hull health after a crew attack. This one's great because, you know, anything that increases your survivability in a firefight is going to be excellent in this game. So every single time you initiate a crew attack with this one, you'll boom, instantly get 8,000 hull health back to your ship. So I can't tell you how many times this one has come in handy. Now, mind you, with this one, I definitely do more crew attacks when I know I have this one equipped. Because if I'm watching my health and I'm making sure and, you know, my timer's going down before I can use my uh, repair kits or whatever, I'm going to specifically target a ship that I can do a crew attack with. You know, I'm going to make sure that it, it, it makes going after small ships in combat a lot more critical at points like that so I won't just wipe them all out I'll go after my main target and then if I notice my health getting low and I've got this equipped boom I'll just go for a crew attack on one of those small ships and it'll instantly you know heal me up 8,000 hull health, which isn't full health or anything, but you know, that's a decent enough chunk to help you stay alive. So the scrapper station is really useful. If you don't ever do any crew attacks, then obviously it's totally useful. And number four, we have the war drums. This one says, here they come sea dogs. And if Davy Jones comes knocking, tell him we ain't ready for his locker yet. Reduces crew stamina depletion by 50% while trimming in combat. This is another one that's great. Your stamina staying up is something extremely important in all combat situations. And I find myself trimming quite a bit when I'm trying to, you know, improve my attack attack vector during almost every single combat I'm in. This one just makes it so you take less stamina when you're trimming in combat. So it doesn't have an effect outside of combat, but during combat, this one's huge. Uh, you find yourself having to eat a lot less coconuts this way. So the war drum takes the number four spot. At number three, we have the iron capstan. This is one I use all the time. Like it's one of the most common ones to see on any build that I'm putting together because it's just so broadly applicable. It says, release the anchor captain. Those gutter swabs won't be able to hit us. Reduces damage taken by 50 15% and increases threat generation by 100% while anchored. This one is just, like I said, broadly applicable. Y you take less damage when you have the iron capstan uh, installed. There's very few builds that can't benefit from some extra damage negation. So the iron capstan takes a number, the number three spot. And number two, we have the water tank. It says three days without water, you say. Bah, a day without rum is its own hell. Reduces crew stamina depletion by 50% while bracing and increases stamina recovery by 20%. This one's just all good. So if you're using a most people in this game should probably learn how to utilize bracing more frequently because the damage negation you get from bracing, especially on several of the ships, is huge. And the only downside of it is it takes up a decent amount of your crew's stamina. This one makes it take a lot less, so it's automatically useful there. Plus, we increase our stamina recovery by 20%. So like I said, there's no downside to this one. You recover stamina quicker and you use less to brace. So especially on tank builds, if you're using the snow or something like that, the water tank is an obvious piece of major furniture. And finally, at number Number one, we have the rigging station. It says, grab your tools, sea rats. will mend the hull faster than they make holes in it. Recovers 1% hull health per second when hull health is less than 20%. So this one is just an upgrade over one of my favorite basic furniture items in that it will fix your hull. This one, however, is active hull health. So it will never bring your hull health back up you know, to 100% automatically, but it will make sure that if you are staying, you know, you're not taking damage, that it will regenerate automatically up to 20%. This one is a lifesaver, very, quite literally, on almost any build you can do. Now, obviously, it may not have as much of a immediate one-time benefit as some of these other things, like the munitions mixture for an ablaze build, uh, or the uh, rope locker for an acceleration build or something like that, but having that ability to automatically regenerate that first 20% of health super useful. It comes in handy all the time. So that one is the one that I put at number one. So that is all of our major furniture, all 12 of them that are currently in the game at the time of me making this video. Like I said, if you feel differently about something that I've said in here, if you would rank them differently or I ranked one high that you rank low or whatever the case may be, uh, definitely let me know down in the comment section. I love hearing from people on this game because several times now someone has said something and then I've tried it out in the game and I'm like, oh, that person was really correct. This thing is actually quite good. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, it's it sucks. <laughs> you know, something like that. But uh, so definitely let me know down in the comments section. But with all that being said, hope this video was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.